CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. ZoneMinder is a free and open source software for Linux operating systems to record security cameras over a network, in this case IP cameras. You could even use one of our coaxial DVRs and use the RTSP stream from it to encode and back up your footage from that DVR onto a NAS drive using ZoneMinder. In this particular installation, we are using the Windows subsystem for Linux. We have installed an Ubuntu distribution onto that Windows subsystem for Linux. And then within here, we have installed Zone Minder. So if we wanted to go ahead and check the log page, we have the SCI camera, Avi camera, and Parking Lot PTZ, which is a part of our Avalonix Premium Series cameras. Those are recording to Zone Minder. Uh, we are getting this WebJS, which stands for JavaScript error. Uh, it seems to do something with the web interface, but we're going to go ahead and ignore that. Uh, one quick tip I do want to show you, just in case you are troubleshooting, we'll start with that. Uh, you can clear this log to get a better idea of what's going on with ZoneMinder because you may get a lot of these web JavaScript errors. So we can come into our terminal here, and then we need to get into the ZoneMinder database. So we're going to do sudo SQL, MySQL, and then do ZM for ZoneMinder, and then you get into the ZoneMinder database, and then we can do truncate logs with a capital L to make sure we're hitting the logs table and truncate that table with the semicolon, and that will go ahead and clear out your log here, make it a little bit easier for you to do some troubleshooting. I am going to show you how to add our cameras to a zone minder, and that is done in the home page, which is the console page. Again, just to recap, I have the parking lot PTZ, which is our premium series Avalonix camera. I have an Ava I camera, part of the Ava I series, and then the SEI camera is from the Security Cameras Inc. line. So all three of our lines can be used on the Zone Minder software, and then we're adding them using the FFmpeg source, which utilizes their RTSP streams, which I have conveniently linked and listed here in this notepad file. So you may want to go ahead and create a notepad file with all of your cameras and their respective IP addresses so you can easily copy and paste and craft these RTSP URLs as I've done so here for all three of my cameras. So to actually demonstrate how to add a camera, we need to first, from the console page, which again should be the default page you're in, click Add. We can go ahead and give our camera a name. I'm just going to go ahead and name this the Premium Series PTZ because we're going to just duplicate the parking lot PTZ camera. And then I'm going to choose source FFmpeg. Now you could attempt to use remote and then use the Onviv driver or Onviv discovery. I was unable to get that to work. So I'm going to show you that the FFmpeg does work really well using the source from the RTSP stream. So you do want to make sure you use the source of FFmpeg. Down here we have the function. It does explain when you select the function. Here, this is the default mode. It's mo cord or motion recording. What this does is it actually does um, continuous recording and then also marks the timeline when motion happens. This makes it really easy to review events or just go into the montage review tab and look for those events in the timeline or play them back directly. Um, you could also do none, which it won't actually connect to the camera at all. Monitor really just lets you do live view. A mode detect is actually just motion detection. It will only record when motion is detected. Record is continuous recording 24 seven. Mo record, as I mentioned, will do motion detection recording and continuous recording. And then no detect will do motion detection and only do motion detection, but it won't actually use any of the motion detection zones that you are able to set in the motion detection settings of zone minder. So with this set, we're going to use the Mo Cord manual option. Again, that's doing continuous recording and marking on a timeline, as well as saving those events in the database as separate events. So we're going to go to the source tab in here. And here's where we enter in the source path, which would be our RTSP streams as I have in my saved my autocomplete here. So I'm going to pull up my notepad where I have my RTSP stream stored. So it'd be like RTSP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address. Now an important note 
if your camera is set to need RTSP authentication, which most of our cameras are, for example, this SEI and AVI camera, both have the credentials written in the RTSP stream, and this is how you would enter in them. You would do user colon password, and then at the IP address, which here in the one that doesn't require authentication, I have the IP address, and then this is important and different for each camera. Each camera will have a directory on it through the RTSP stream that allows you to use arguments to choose um, the subtype. If you were accessing a recorder or trying to pull channels or, or data from a recorder, you could choose the channel, in which case for the premium series, I have cam real monitor question mark, which allows me to add the arguments channel equal one. That's the camera I'm using. And then subtype equals zero, which is the mainstream. If I wanted to pull the substream for performance reasons or for storage impact reasons, you know, reduce the storage required, then I would do subtype equal one for the substream from this camera. Hopping over to the Security Cameras Inc. camera, it's slash RTSP slash streaming question mark again to allow for arguments. We have channel equal zero one, similar to the premium series, and then subtype equal a so it would be a for the mainstream b for the substream and then most sei cameras also have an even lighter mobile stream which would be subtype c last but not least we have avi down here at the bottom in which case it also has a slash media and then slash video one for the mainstream video two would be the substream and some of those avi cameras have a substream two, which would be video three. I don't have the recorder uh, channel listed here, uh, but there is certainly a way to get that from an AVI NVR as well using some sort of channel argument. So to get back to adding this premium series camera to ZoneMinder one again, I'm just going to highlight and copy and paste that into the source path. And then down here, we do need to make sure that we use the target color space, and then we do set the capture resolution. If you don't do this, then the camera may not connect. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this neat dropdown. You could also enter it manually. It just so happens to be a 2K or 1440p camera. So I'm gonna choose that option. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click save. There are so several other options you can play around with. I'm gonna go ahead and back click back on the IP address to get back into this menu. And there are a ton of other options available in here. Uh, I'm not going to dive into those options. You can play around with those options and figure out and tweak those settings as you see fit. Again, for performance, storage, or what name you. This software is extremely customizable uh, for your surveillance needs. And I'm just going back to the console. I could either click that back arrow as I did or click right on console. And within about 30 seconds to a minute, I would have received a green status for the Premium Series PTZ. Again, this is a duplicate of my parking lot PTZ camera up here. And you'll notice these are set to monitor, these three at the top. So they're not actually recording. They're just, you know, if I click on their preview, I'm able to pull up a preview from these cameras. And you can see here in this inter web interface, although this is running on an Ubuntu installation, it's working with Apache, which is a web server, to host this in a web browser. And I'm actually previewing my camera through a web browser. And if I wanted to change the mode, I could just simply click on the function under the list here. And then I would change it to any of those modes that I discussed earlier. I'm gonna leave this on monitor just so it's not chewing up my storage space here. If you hover over here on the default, you can see how much storage space is being used. Here I'm using 180 gigabytes out of one terabyte. Again, that's something that I'm not gonna dive into too deeply, but to manage your storage, you could go under filters, go to choose a filter and purge when full. I've set it to purge or delete the events and recordings if my disk percentage reaches 25% because I'm also using this Ubuntu install for some other purposes. So I don't want ZoneMinder to take up a large percentage of my disk. But back into the console, again, covering the modes, these are set to monitor to not eat up my storage. And then I just set this camera to Mo Cord. So you'll note that it, it does show you how much bandwidth the cameras are using and the current frames per second that ZoneMinder is detecting.
from those cameras to give you an idea of how much bandwidth is being used by your cameras through Zone Minder. So this is pretty much it on how to add the cameras. Like I mentioned, there's an infinite number of ways to configure and customize your Zone Minder installation. You could have several disks dedicated to different cameras. You could come in here to the Options tab and make different changes to the various settings in here. One of the things that I did to prevent the log from looking at red all the time is I turned these to zero uh, to make sure that it's not just red because of the JavaScript error uh, that you'll see continues to happen over and over again. Um, and then you can actually look at a montage of these cameras in a grid view on the montage tab. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, you could do montage review to review events from the camera. There's some neat ways that you can filter through the events and search different times. So I have no data because the cameras weren't recording an hour ago, but you could click those to easily see those old events as they're recorded. Again, making sure that you have this set to MoCord or some sort of event-based recording. Also worth mentioning that you can easily get to the event recordings that your camera has recorded by coming on the console page and under the events column here you can click right on the number of events that a particular camera has recorded. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the SEI camera and here's a log of all the events that the system actually recorded and then you can watch that event by clicking on the thumbnail option and it'll pull that data from your ZoneMinder storage directory and allow you to play it back with all the data on the left hand side here and then some playback controls on the bottom. As I mentioned, it's continuous recording and then here on the timeline we can see where motion occurred or events were really detected by notated by the red recording on the timeline or vice versa. Hopefully this video gives you an overview of how to add Avalonix cameras from CCTV Camera World to the Zone Minder software. And I hope I have reasonably covered some of the surface level things that you can do inside of Zone Minder. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.